Ukrainian leader Volodymyr Zelensky has cut an increasingly desperate figure in recent months. The war with Russia has entered its third calendar year. The crucial city of Avdivka has just fallen into enemy hands. A vital new military aid package from the US has been delayed in Congress. At no time in the conflict has the situation looked bleaker for the beleaguered Ukrainian people. In a report in the UK's Guardian newspaper from February 20th, Zelensky is quoted as saying that the situation is extremely difficult, an understatement or a tacit admission of defeat. Whichever way you interpret his words, the war looks to be slipping out of Kyiv's hands. But what if there was one piece of serious military hardware that could not only give Ukraine the edge over Russia, but do so within 24 hours? Pie in the sky? Wishful thinking? Maybe not. Enter the F-35 Lightning II fighter jet. But what's so special about this particular aircraft, and why could it play such a decisive and swift role in the conflict? According to Lockheed Martin, an American aerospace arms and defense corporation, the F-35 is the centerpiece of 21st century global security. The pilots who've flown the jet wholeheartedly agree. According to a report in Business Insider, Billy Flynn, a former Canadian lieutenant colonel and senior F-35 test pilot, told The Aviationist in April 2023 that the jet could play a key role in the conflict. The F-35 was designed precisely for an environment that we are seeing in Ukraine now. Principally funded by the US, the F-35 first flew in 2006 and entered full military service with the US Marine Corps in July 2015. But in terms of actual combat, the jet was first used in 2018 by the Israeli Air Force. To give you an idea of how highly the F-35 is regarded, the US plans to buy 2,456 jets by 2044. This will constitute the bulk of the crewed tactical aviation of the US Air Force, Navy and Marine Corps for several decades. Additionally, the aircraft will be a cornerstone of NATO and US allied air power and operate until 2070. It could easily be classed as the most sophisticated fighter jet in the world. Add 10 plus years of combat experience into the mix and you'll get an even better idea of the difference it could make in the war in Ukraine. But perhaps the F-35's most potent ability is being able to link up and share target data with other ground, naval and air units, meaning the enemy is facing five opponents instead of one. Even without any upgrades, the F-35 outperforms other fighters in the US fleet. It's been proven to defeat adversary aircraft in exercises by a truly stunning 20 to 1 margin. Better still, it accomplishes a broader array of tasks, and it's easier to maintain than other fighter jets. By some distance, it's the most reliable tactical aircraft in the joint fleet. So the jet most certainly has an impressive pedigree. But what exactly does the F-35 Lightning II bring to the table in terms of combat capabilities, and how could it provide the crucial air dominance Ukraine wants over Russia? A multi-role stealth aircraft, this jet has been designed for air superiority and strike missions. Equipped with a powerful electronic warfare and intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance suite, it offers the ultimate in aerial firepower. Just as importantly, the F-35 can gather and distribute real-time battlefield information to friendly forces that we just mentioned. Its weapon capabilities are potentially devastating and incredibly versatile. In a configuration known as Beast Mode, it carries four 500-pound GBU-12 laser-guided bombs on its wings, two GBU-12 in its internal weapons bay, and an AIM-9 air-to-air heat-seeking missile. And while that may mean sacrifices in stealth for firepower, we're still looking at a very dangerous piece of equipment. Moreover, the F-35's ability to enhance the capabilities of friendly aircraft would be invaluable in the conflict in Ukraine. Why? The jet excels in highly contested airspace and would be far more effective than the F-16s that have already been deployed to the area and will be deployed in greater numbers later in the year. Particularly adept against surface-to-air missile systems and other ground defenses, it will easily destroy them and any enemy aircraft to achieve air dominance. How? The aircraft's stealth profile. These capabilities are crucial to the aircraft's effectiveness, never more so than in any potential deployment in Ukraine. The F-35 II was designed for wars where the front lines are contested with surface-to-air missile radars SAMs. Granted, Russia has powerful SAMs, only they can't be deployed near the front lines. Another tick in the box for the F-35 II. If nothing else, the Ukraine conflict has shown just how vulnerable fourth-generation aircraft are to air defenses that are 40-plus years old and even considered antiquated by some armed forces. Russia has been deploying SAMs in Belarus, Crimea, as well as in the Donbass and Kherson region, effectively covering large parts of Ukrainian airspace. 
For that reason, Ukrainian pilots have been restricted to flying over grasslands, highways, and treetops throughout the conflict to avoid detection. That's why the F-35 would be so effective in not just heading a bombing campaign from the outset, but also routine air-to-air -air and air-ground sorties. The bottom line, the aircraft can strike wherever and whenever needed. The result, air dominance, may be within as little as 24 hours. Make no mistake, air dominance is one thing, but the F-35 would also be crucial in helping Ukrainian forces regain lost territories and ultimately banish the Russians from their soil once and for all. For many, however, the ace up the sleeve for the F-35 is in terms of pure kinematics. In attrition warfare, where each aircraft has a clear view of the other, it's simply a matter of whoever launches the missile first will win the battle. In a low observable F-35, however, the aircraft wouldn't be seen by the enemy fighter jet. Therefore, the pilot can shoot a missile before the adversary is aware of its existence. For that reason, it would eliminate the need to play the kind of kinematic tactics that have been a part of aerial combat through all the years of third-generation and fourth-generation weapons and fighters. So how would the F-35 fare against its Russian counterpart, the Su-30? While both are advanced fighter jets, the F-35 is more designed for air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat. In comparison, the Su-30 is a highly maneuverable and agile fourth-generation fighter, designed to be in dogfights, close-run engagements, with ultimate deployment and strategy perhaps being the deciding factor, but we'll discuss the more tactical side of Russia's Air Force plan later in the video. And there's more. Once air dominance is achieved, backup aircraft like the F-16 could provide additional firepower against ground troops, with the all-singing and all-dancing F-35 patrolling the skies to protect them. Potentially, it could have played a decisive role in the battle for Avdivka. With aerial support of this magnitude, the key town in the Donbass region would likely not have fallen into Russian hands. Theoretically, therefore, as few as four F-35s could provide air superiority over a limited area, such as the skies in Ukraine. In a report in Air and Space Forces magazine, Air Force General Todd D. Walters, who also serves as NATO's Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, concurred with that theory. He said that getting more F-35s to Europe, either as part of the US Air Force or for other nations, is critical. More specifically, he claimed, they'll deliver a tremendous improvement in strategic ability, in indications and warnings, command and control, and mission command. Now, all of this might sound incredible. If Zelensky's allies want to bring an end to the war as quickly as possible, then the F-35 too has the tools to do the job. But wars are never straightforward affairs to conduct, and most importantly, to finance. By the same token, it's in nobody's interest for the conflict to drag on and on into 2025 and beyond. With that in mind, what is the likelihood of Ukraine receiving the four F-35s it needs to achieve dominance over its own airspace? The answer to that question is complex, manifold, and ultimately out of Zelensky's hands. But perhaps the most pertinent factor to consider is how much one of these miracle fighter jets actually costs. Well, if you were shopping for just a single F-35 Lightning II, it would set you back around the $109 million mark. But you would get plenty of choice and bang for your buck. There are three options with different operating abilities available. Conventional takeoff and landing, F-35A, short takeoff and vertical landing, F-35B, and a variant designed for aircraft carrier operations, F-35C. But of course, there is so much more to fighter jet deployment than just the cost of one aircraft. According to Simply Flying, the overall project cost of the F-35 program has increased from an initial $200 billion to over $400 billion, with an estimated lifetime cost of $1.7 trillion. And this perhaps brings us to the crux of the issue. Since the invasion in February 2022, Ukraine has received huge military aid packages from the West. According to a CNN report, that figure is around $350 billion. According to stats from the New York Times, the European Union collectively has provided about $148.5 billion in assistance since Russia launched its full-scale invasion. Crazy, mind-boggling numbers. But even with the best will in the world and the greatest of intentions, financial support of that kind can't go on forever. No matter how big or powerful a nation or collective of nations, their coffers are not a bottomless pit. Hence the wrangling in the US Congress we touched upon at the top of the video. So that very much leaves Ukraine's Western allies with a risk and reward scenario to weigh up. Go all in with Zelensky and supply him with F-35s or supply less effective hardware and watch the conflict drag on. Encouragingly, they can look to the start of the conflict. 
Before a single shell was fired, Western officials predicted that Russia would enjoy the kind of air supremacy it enjoyed in the large-scale airstrikes in the Syrian war. But failure on the first day of the Russians to destroy the Ukrainian air defense facilities has hampered Moscow's invasion strategy, a senior Western intelligence official told The Times. In terms of numbers, it didn't make pretty reading for the Ukrainians. At the start of Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine was believed to have around 120 combat-capable aircraft, mainly consisting of aging Soviet-era MiG-29s and Su-27s. To match Moscow's firepower, which is thought to be five to six times greater than Kyiv's, they needed up to 200 jets. Without a doubt, the battle for the skies has been one of the more curious and certainly most crucial subplots of the war. According to a CNN report from 2022, the Russian Air Force had a massive advantage in terms of overall hardware. To give you a more detailed breakdown, Russia's 1,391 aircraft to Ukraine's 132, complemented by 948 helicopters to Kyiv's 55, was capable of the kind of aerial dominance required to end Ukraine's resistance. But for whatever reason, botched Russian tactics being the most popular and persuasive explanation, it simply didn't happen. It's also worth noting that Russia's overall defense budget of $45.8 billion is almost 10 times that of its neighbor. There's more. Russia had roughly 300 military aircraft stationed around the borders of the country, but has used few in the invasion so far. Instead, Russia has used attack helicopters and some short-range fighters, but made very limited use of long-range attack aircraft and bombers. Why is a question that has beguiled many military experts. One reason may be that Russia is not confident they destroyed Ukraine's air defenses and are not confident they can send fighters overhead without losing them," said another senior military figure. Given the F-35's undoubted capabilities, coupled with its suitability for this kind of conflict, air dominance could perhaps be achieved in Ukraine with relative ease. So, are financial constraints the main thing working against Zelensky then? To answer that question, we need to look at the bigger picture. Logistically, supplying the Ukraine with fighter jets isn't the most straightforward of processes. Why? Training. It's believed that Ukraine has 50 pilots who could start training them on Western jets immediately. However, preparing them to fly warplanes takes time. Just as importantly, it removes them from current fighting duties. And with the fall of such a crucial and symbolically important city as Avdivka, Zelensky would be very reluctant to withdraw experienced fighters from the front line. To address this issue, the British government has offered to train Ukrainian pilots on NATO standard aircraft. This comes with a depressing caveat, however, as it's clearly a longer-term option. Training pilots could take months or even years, especially considering the complexity of the modern fighter jet. But encouragingly, British officials think the training process could be ramped up for some of Ukraine's more seasoned pilots with years of experience flying Soviet-era jet planes. Not the greatest news for Zelensky, but not a disaster by any means. However, the training issue also rears its ugly head in terms of maintenance. To keep a jet like the F-35-2 airborne requires complex and specialized engineering. Dr. Jamie Shear, formerly of NATO, told the BBC that fifth-generation fighter jets require extensive maintenance following almost every flight. Again, Ukraine just doesn't have the personnel on the ground with the kind of experience needed to keep their prospective F-35s in the air. Again, it's important to note that air superiority isn't just about the number of aircraft you have in the skies. It also involves a variety of factors such as tactics and support systems. Invariably, military operations are complex and dynamic, and it's impossible to predict the outcome of any engagement with certainty. Once again, you need experienced people on the ground coordinating your aerial attacks, not just maintaining your hardware. Essential considerations that will not have been overlooked by Zelensky's allies. When multi-million dollar aircraft are involved, decisions need to be weighed carefully. But it must be stated, the F-35 isn't the only fighter jet in the world that could assist the Ukrainian war effort against the Russian aggressors. At the time of writing for this video, Ukraine is due to receive a significant shipment of F-16 fighters from the West in the spring. Yuri Anat, the spokesperson of the Air Force Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, estimated that the country needed between 100 and 200 jets to defend its airspace. According to a report in the New York Times from back in August of 2023, the Netherlands and Denmark joined the US in pledging to donate some jets to the Ukrainian cause, all of which prompted Zelensky to post on messaging app Telegram a breakthrough agreement. From today, there are already specifics. They will be in the Ukrainian sky. Thank you.
Even so, there are deeper divisions and retinents that have opened up since Putin's invasion. Not just in the United States, but throughout the Western world, there is an increasing sense of war weariness. Even those who passionately supported Zelensky during the first few months of the conflict look to have had a change of heart. Gradually, people have started to realize that the massive military aid packages that their governments are providing are doing nothing more than prolonging the conflict. Citizens are tired of turning on their televisions and seeing bombed out shells of buildings and dead bodies piled up in the streets. A catch-22 situation if ever there was one. If enough people think that doing the right thing is having the wrong outcome, it puts yet another obstacle in Zelensky's path. All of which begs the question, what next? Some experts have advocated a negotiated peace settlement. In a report obtained by Newsweek, there have been calls for the US to play a more significant role in facilitating the process. The paper published by the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft disputes the idea that diplomacy is entirely untenable. However, that claim does have a chilling caveat. The authors believe that the view that a negotiated end to the war in Ukraine is neither possible nor desirable is false. It's also extremely dangerous for Ukraine's future. The war is not trending toward a stable stalemate, but toward Ukraine's eventual collapse. But if the whispering coming out of Moscow, or more correctly, the bullish posturing Putin displayed in his interview with Tucker Carlson, are to be believed, any peace deal would be so heavily loaded in Russia's favor, Zelensky would never put pen to paper in a million years. A more likely scenario is continued hostilities and further loss of life, even if 2024 is more of a year of consolidation for both sides rather than all-out offensives. Who would be happy with that outcome is obvious. With the fall of Avdivka and 20% of Ukrainian territory in his back pocket, Putin looks happy to play the long game, wait and see what Zelensky and the West come up with next. The battle of air dominance was thought to be a key factor in the war itself, and while that hasn't quite happened as yet, there is no doubt that the introduction of a fighter jet like the F-35 would make Putin and his colleagues in the Kremlin very nervous indeed. Ultimately, such an aircraft could make all the difference in Ukraine's war with Russia, with its advanced electronic warfare and intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance suite, it would give them the upper hand in the air and essential support for ground troops. In terms of aerial firepower, we've already talked about its four 500-pound GBU-12 laser-guided bombs on its wings, the two GBU-12 in its internal weapons bay, and the AIM-9 air-to-air heat-seeking missile. And the ability to gather and distribute real-time battlefield information to friendly forces would enable troops to coordinate decisive offensives and counter-offensives far more effectively. But all of this must be tempered with a solid dose of military and economic reality. History teaches us that it's not always the biggest or best equipped army that wins the war. The will and determination of the people embroiled in the conflict have often proven to be the determining factor. But as mentioned, perhaps the biggest conundrum facing the West is whether prolonging the war will not only be counterproductive to their collective goals, but come at too much of a cost in terms of human life. Granted, it is well within Biden's and all the other Western leaders' capabilities to supply Ukraine with enough F-35 jets to gain air dominance over Russia in a super quick time, but will it bring a swift end to the conflict? Now we're coming to the end of the video, it's time to ask you what you think about the current situation in Ukraine. Do you think the deployment of the F-35 Lightning II could help Ukraine deal a fatal blow to Russia? Would establishing air dominance be a crucial factor in the outcome of the war? And if that's the case, would it make sense for NATO, the US, and the rest of Zelensky's allies to act now in an attempt to put a swift end to the conflict? Or are you on the other side of the fence? Taking into account Biden's reluctance to supply Ukraine with fighter jets two years ago, is there any realistic chance of Ukraine being supplied with state-of-the-art military hardware now? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe for more military content and analysis from military experts.